So, uh, in a nutshell, like if I were to really distill all of tennis down to like one theme, it would be maximizing the use of the big parts of the body right. and relaxing the small parts of the body. Right. Like if we can do those two things on every shot in tennis, then you're going to be pretty solid. Yeah. Actually, start with uh, I really like this example from Wozniacki because she's using more of a traditional approach here. She's like taking a step forward. It's not like a big fancy like open stance, like reverse, like, like kind of thing. Right. Like this is very kind of straightforward, traditional kind of swing. And so, and I also like this example because we have a logo on her left hip and we also have a logo on the left side of her shoulders or her chest. And so that's useful because on setup, we can see that as she starts her forward swing, we can see both the logos are pointing towards the camera. And by the time the ball arrives on her racket, watch both of those logos, how they both transition forwards. And before she hits the ball, both of those logos are now gone from, from view. So when the body does its job, the arm can stay relaxed and just be uh, loose and that's where you get long, smooth swings. It's not because of the arm, it's because the body has powered the shot. Along for the rest. Yeah, and so it, it enables the arm to be passive, relatively speaking. Does that make sense? Never thought of it like that, I love that, yes. <laughs> and so uh, this is a universal, like, I, I really just kind of like that clip, but like you know, we can look at any, any player you want. And uh, Novak here, we don't have a logo on, oh, actually we do. We got a logo on the shorts and on the, the chest as well. Same kind of thing. So that, that logo on his uh, left leg has already disappeared. We can see it here. And watch how his hips turn, his chest turns. And there's a stripe on the side of his shorts here that we couldn't see as he set up. But by the time he hits, his lower body turns, his upper body turns, and that's what pulls the racket forward to contact. So at contact, his hips are facing forwards and his chest is facing forwards. And that allows his arm to stay nice and relaxed. So this is the first thing we're gonna focus on with you. I'll, I'll go to yours in a second. I'll just cut to the chase. You're doing a good job of this with your upper body, which is why your forehand is a strength. Your, your upper body rotates nice and early, which most 3-5 players don't do that. Your lower body, however, is staying kind of trapped. Yeah. And so you're doing good job with your upper body while your lower body stays kind of stuck. And that makes it difficult for you to really progress. Yeah. So on a setup, you look just like Novak or Wozniacki. Your hips are facing the camera. Your chest is facing the camera. And so this is what basically enables the body to do work. Like you've initiated your swing with your body in a sideways position so you could turn forwards and have your arm kind of be more passive. And you do a good job of that. If you just watch the logo on your shirt, at contact, kind of the, the gold standard that I like to look for is the plane of the shoulders parallel to the baseline at contact. And you're close to that. You're, you're just short of that. You're, you're almost parallel you're gonna have a hard time getting the parallel because your hips are still facing the camera. But sometimes I see you hit with an open stance. I don't know if you're aware, like you occasionally hit open stance uh, for it, which is great. So I don't think it's necessarily a footwork pr uh, problem per se, but even with, even with this kind of final step with your left foot forwards, your uh, right hip should be able to come around and, and release. And, I'll, and eventually you do. Watch after the, the hit. Watch this, this right hip comes around after the hit. But I'd love to see your, your hips in this position at contact, okay. not, after, not after the ball has already left. You and I are gonna shadow through some swings together. And I'd like you to set up in a square stance. And you and I are gonna shadow through some slow forehands. And we're going to segment those shadow swings into three pieces. Um, you're going to pretend you're kind of looking in a mirror here. I'm, I'm going to do it lefty and you're going to do it righty. And so position one is going to be set up position. 
I know normally you wouldn't just like stand here like this, but we're just going to start off in, in this position and pretend a, a ball is coming in towards your, your forehand uh, contact point. And so this is position one. Uh, position two is going to be dropping the racket. Then what we're going to do is turn our shoulders and hips uh, forwards, but leave the racket back. Yeah, exactly. So what we're going to experience here is a separation between the racket's position and the body's position. Um, you're very much used to your racket coming along with your, yeah, with your shoulders. And I'm actually going to challenge you to leave the racket there. This is just a feel exercise and feel what it's like to leave the racket there and have your hips initiate before your racket goes forwards. It's the opposite of what you're used to doing. You're used to your, your racket and your shoulders going and then your, your hips turn forwards. So we're gonna uh, prepare, drop, turn the, the hips forwards and leave the racket there and then bring the racket forwards to contact and just pause at the point of contact. So that's it right now. So prepare. We're just going to break that up into pieces and just pause for a second in each position. Good job. Pause at contact for me. Good. One more time. Prepare. Racket drops. Body forwards. Good. Can you remember kind of the image of Wozniacki and uh, Novak? Yeah. So watch, here's the, this is the last one that you just did. So the racket's dropping. Now watch your hips and your chest, how they're leading the racket now. And before you make contact, your hips are facing forwards. Look at that right knee, how it's pointed forwards. Yeah. And so now there's this, I used the word separation before, how the, the body and the hips, it's, it's kind of, we're kind of forcing it right now, but you, you're, can see how there's this separation now, this lag, people call it, between the, the body turning forwards and the arm uh, being back a little bit. We're kind of, like I said, kind of forcing it at the moment, but if you look at this, you can see that it's really similar. Now all of a sudden, your, your hips, watch uh, Roger here, how his chest and his hips pull the buck cap forwards and it, the racket is trailing behind. Same thing here. Look at how your, your hips and your chest are pulling the racket around. Your racket head is trailing. It's, it's not exactly the same, but you can see how we're mimicking that leading of the swing with the big parts of the body now. Wow. So just kind of uh, burn that into your brain really, second, uh, really quickly and then watch for a second here and look at how much it looks like you're kind of fighting your own body, how your, your chest is working hard to turn while your hips are stuck in last week. Okay, now I'd like you to move through that whole sequence in one continuous motion. So um, you'll start off turning to the side, you can prepare, but then once the racket starts to drop, you're immediately gonna start to turn the hips forward so that as the racket falls, your hips are pulling and then you're coming to contact and finishing the, the shot. So try to con connect all the dots together in one smooth motion. Good. About another half dozen of those. Hips, lead, arm follows. Hips, lead, arm follows. The more separation you can create right now, the, the better. Another half dozen of those. Hips, lead, Do you arm see it? Follows. You could also watch the logo on your chest, watch how it disappears before you get to contact. Now all of a sudden things are starting to flow together a little bit more smoothly and you can see how the body is leading and the hips are, are leading the shot and the racket's following just like Roger is doing here. Loosen up your arm as much as possible. So let the hips and the chest pull the racket around. One more. Good. All right, now we're gonna do something a little crazy. You're gonna do one of those slow, smooth shadow swings. And then on the next one, I'm gonna to toss the ball out to your right. You're not gonna go after it. 
it's going to bounce and go past you and you're just going to time your shadow swing with the ball going past you. So you're not going to hit it, it's just going to be like a little trigger, a little timing mechanism that you're going to practice your new swing with the ball going past. Does that make sense? Yeah. So do one shadow and now this is going to be a fake toss. Good. And do another one of those. Good. Two fake tosses. Just time it. Hips go first. All right, Jeff, and now we're going to go a shadow, a fake, and then on the third one, I'm going to toss it, hopefully right into your strike zone. Your only goal is to just do the early turn with the hips the same exact way you did on the shadow, the same exact way you did on the fake toss. If you hit the ball, fantastic. If you don't hit it, it doesn't matter as long as you just do the new technique correctly. So if you hit it, it doesn't matter if it goes over the net or in the court or, or over the back curtain, like it doesn't make any difference. I just want you to focus all your attention on how your body's moving. Does that make sense? So one shadow, one fake, hips go first, yep, and one hit. Good, nice job. Shadow, fake, hit, same execution. Good, nice Jeff. So here's the last uh, set of three that you just did. Here's the shadow. Look at how er nice and early you're, you're turning your hips now. Yeah, so arms getting pulled behind. And then here's the fake toss where you're not hitting the ball, just focusing on doing the same thing. Am I leaning back? Uh, I'm not concerned about it right now. Okay. But good timing. Yeah. Put it in just the right spot. And then here's the hit. So what we want to see here is the same, like we want your body to look the same and the timing to be the same with your hips going first. Yeah, good, look at that. Awesome. Uh, when we look at this compared to about an hour ago at, uh, at contact, and it's not apples to apples. You're having to move a little bit here on the left, and we'll get to that eventually. But you look at the body position <laughs> between the two, and it's a completely different thing. It's, all, it's like... All, it's, it's like we've taken this position and turned the whole thing 90 degrees so that now your, your entire body is, is facing the net. That's great. Any questions on this? All right, let's do a bunch more. Okay. Would love to get to the point where it's, we're on the baseline, we're moving a bit and still doing it. Uh, we might not get all the way there today just because we want to get in you know, our other shots too. But in a nutshell, like this, we've already seen like the before and after and now I'm going to help you try to kind of develop it closer to real life. All right Jeff uh, we're going to do now a, a single uh, fake toss and then you're going to hit three balls in a row. So we're going to remove the shadow swing and there's going to be a ball on all four. So here's a fake toss. Yep and now three hits in a row same focus. Yep just focus on the hips going first. Good, that was a little too early. Good, nice job. Same movement, hips first. Good, again. Good, again. Good, I got one more ball, again. That looks really nice, Jeff. I can, I can tell you're, you're starting to kind of feel the whole thing a little more. Watch how you're moving. There's something that looks much better about this, doesn't it? Yeah. You're like, huh. <laughs> this, this is fantastic. This is, this is the lag everybody's talking about. You're, you're now arriving at a forward facing position a little before contact, which is in real life, it might be a tad early, mm -hmm. but if you're going to err one way or the other for the time being, for the sake of changing your habit, this is really, really nice. Uh, this is fantastic. And so that slingshot, you know, feeling that you're getting is because your arm now is becoming much, much, much more passive. And now your body, for the first time in your life, 
is truly actually powering this shot. And this looseness now that your arm has, like this, <laughs> I in it, we inadvertently fixed the second thing that we were going to talk about. And I'm really happy I decided to just hold off on it because uh, every once in a while we kind of get lucky and what, the first thing fixes the second thing. And that's happening here. And that's why you're hearing the sound and you're seeing the shape. This is a completely, like you just went from old school to modern. This is, this is the old school way of hitting the ball. Your, your arm is kind of one big piece yeah. and kind of rigid and, and straight. This is, this is modern swing at the forehand. I always wanted to follow through like that. It's because I wasn't even thinking about my arm. I'm telling you, Jeff, the follow through is not like a thing to like be trained. Right. It's a result to right. be reaped based on what you do before contact. You should never work on your follow through. Right. It should be a byproduct of, it is a byproduct of what you do before contact. So the next thing we're gonna do is gonna, is we're gonna go back to the, there's a tape mark in no man's land there. That's gonna be your, your home base for the next five minutes or so. And so we're just gonna do the same thing that we were doing on the service line, but now from a little, a little further back. So go ahead and make a few shadows. Fake. Hips first. That's it. That's it. Good, one more time. Fake. Three hits. Hips first. Good, Jeff. Hips first. Hips first. That's it. Here's those last three. Good job. It's starting to look pretty comfortable with it. Getting a lot of clearance over the net. Just the byproduct, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> this, is, this is great. I'm, I'm really happy with how this is looking. Right. Yeah, you're, you're spinning the ball more, you're shaping the ball more without trying to. And that's a beautiful thing. It doesn't always happen, but when it does, you gotta enjoy it. <laughs> Looks great. Let's go back to the baseline now. And I'm actually gonna set the ball machine up again. And we'll use the, the ball machine. All right, and we're just simply gonna do the same thing here, Jeff. You're gonna get four feeds and the first one, you're actually just kind of kind of step out of the way. They're all going to be the same feed. So uh, the first one, you're just going to uh, step back, let the ball go past, and you're going to practice timing your swing with that ball. And then you'll just take a step forwards and make your, your three swings with your body going first. All right, let's do uh, fake first. Let this one go by. Yep, and now three hits, nice and relaxed. Body goes first. Yeah, good Jeff. Hips first. Good job. Hips first. Yeah, good. Make a shadow. And then a fake. And three hits. Hips go first. Yeah, good. No worries. Good job. Good execution. Hips go first. Good. Yeah. Quality of the execution goes before actually hitting the ball. Because even that one that you swing and miss, you know, kind of the traditional way of thinking about it is it was a wasted, like the ball was sitting there, it was a wasted opportunity. But what we're really trying to do is retrain the body and the mind. And so even if you don't even hit the ball, if, if your hips went early and all, everything was in line, like that's still like a positive reinforcement of what the new thing is. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do one more test here, Jeff. I'm going to change the ball machine to come out to your forehand corner, just like we did this morning. And we're gonna see if we can do the same thing with a little bit of movement. And now a fake. Hips got stuck on that one. 
Good, better, better. Good, good. One more time. Early with the hips. Okay. All right, let's take a look on the iPad. Watch it. Interestingly, it wasn't actually a hit. This is the one that I made the comment. Uh, this is actually a, a fake. So the ball, you, you're not even hitting the ball. Watch this back hit. Look at that. Yeah. So th this would have been contact. Your chest got stuck. Your hips got stuck. This is this is just straight back to the the old one. Lazy. No. Bad habit. Bad habit. Don't be so hard on yourself. Okay. <laughs> it's not your fault. If you can snap your fingers and just be like switch, flip a switch and like go to the new forehand program, of course you would do that. Right. This doesn't have anything to do with your dedication or your your uh, ability to provide effort, you know, yes. or anything like, or preference for doing nothing. <laughs> like this is just your, your old habit coming back through. Yes. So I, I made the comment and then here's the, the next one. Look at that. So yeah, if anything, you were, you overdid it here yeah. and you can tell there was kind of some tension. Yeah. You're like, Oh man, I'm going to make sure I do this one right. And so everything got a little bit tight yeah. and tense. Yeah, and you're a little, again, a little bit early here, which is fantastic. Yeah, it's honestly, it's really great that you even have the capacity to do it wrong in the other direction. Most people get stuck somewhere in the neighborhood of their original one. This is the, the last one. So this, this looks great. You did a really nice job here uh, using your body early. We have other stuff we could comment on, but for the next couple months, do me a favor and only focus on just the initiation of your body and your hips. Yep. And it's going to be a completely different thing six, eight, ten weeks from now if you really dedicate yourself to this. You're going to be hitting a bigger shot with less effort than you are now.